Hi, boys and girls. Today we're going to be doing Unit 5, Lesson 10, Solve Problems with Decimals. We're going to round and order decimals to solve problems. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Well, I notice that there looks like there is a person on a sled going very fast down some sort of tunnel. Looks like a tunnel. There are numbers in column A and there are numbers in column B. Looks like the numbers in column A are all increasing and the numbers in column B, some are bigger and then they get smaller and then they get bigger again. Let's see, what else? All of the numbers in column B are bigger than the numbers in column A. And the numbers in column A have thousands, tens, hundreds, thousands here, tens, hundreds, thousands. And the numbers in column B only go to the hundredths place value. I wonder what the numbers mean and how they relate to the person in the sled. So let's find out. The person in the picture is performing a sporting event called the luge. Athletes go down a steep ice track on a sled. The numbers on the left are times in seconds it took the athletes to complete the course. The numbers on the right are the maximum speed. Oh, so let me write that down. So this is the numbers on the left are the time. This is the time. Whoops, what is that? Let's go get a little number there. Here we go. Time, right, in seconds. And this was their speed. Wow. Wow. In miles per hour, right? Miles per hour. So their maximum speed, 82 miles an hour. Wow. That would be very scary. Very, very scary. All right. Let's see what they're going to ask us to do about that. Or are we just noticing and wonder? What can you do in one second? What can you do in a tenth of a second? So we could measure that if we wanted to in class, couldn't we? All right, here we go. How would the result of the race change if the times were recorded to the nearest second? So I have some athletes here, their times, and then their speeds. So this is probably the same chart we had in the warm-up. All right, how would the results of the race change if the times were recorded to the nearest second? Good question. So that means that we would round everything to the nearest second. So this would be 40 nine, right? I underline the eight and look at the five. The five moves that up to eight, doesn't it? So 48.5 is going to be closer to 49 than it is to 48. Same thing here. Wow. They're all going to be rounding up to 49, aren't they? Six makes that closer to 49 and seven makes that closer to 49. So we wouldn't know who won the race if we just recorded the times to the nearest whole number, would we? We wouldn't even know who won the race. Seriously, if we just recorded 48 seconds, we wouldn't know who won the race, even if we didn't round, right? How would the results change of the race change if the times were recorded to the nearest tenths of a second, okay? So we don't know the winner. Let's write that. No winner. Why is my pen doing that? Let's try that again. No winner. It would all be 49 seconds, right? How would the results of the race change if the times were recorded to the nearest tenth of the second? So here's the tenth. So this would be 48 and 5 tenths. Ooh, this, now we're getting somewhere. 48 and we would round the five, what, up to six tenths. This would also be 48, 48 and six tenths. That three makes the six stay the same. So that would be 48 and six tenths. And then this would be 48 and seven tenths. So we would have a clear winner. We would have a clear winner, but we would also have some ties, right? We wouldn't know who got second place. We can only tell you who got first place. So we would have one first place winner 
place winner, but then three people would get second place. And then, well, we would have a clear loser, that's for sure. Athlete number one went the, the slowest or the fastest. Actually, we're, that would be the slowest, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm thinking about this wrong. We want the fastest time, so we want the shortest amount of time that it took them to go through. So athlete number one would be the winner, and athlete number five would be the loser because they went the slowest. But still, we would only have one first-place winner, and we would have three second-place winners. How would the results of the race change if the times were recorded to the nearest hundredth of a second? All right, so let me get rid of all of this, and we'll do the hundredths and see if that gives us a clear winner. Remember, we're looking for the shortest amount of time because we want them to go to the fastest, right? right? So we're going to underline the three and look at the two. So this would be 48 and 53 hundredths. This would be 48 and 56 hundredths. This would be 48 and what? 63 hundredths. This would be 48 and another 63. So again, we would have a tie because that four keeps the three the chain, same. And then here we would have 48 and 70. That eight's going to make that zero go up to one, right? So we would have a first place winner, a second place winner. We would have a tie for third place, and then we would have a last place. So that's how those results would change if we did not record to the nearest thousandth of a spot. Okay, Let's see what is next. How does rounding the time to the nearest second impact each of the athletes? Well, we already talked about that, didn't we? It makes all of the times greater and impossible to distinguish. It impacts the fastest athletes the most as their times are shifted up the most. How does rounding the times to the nearest tenth of a second impact each of the athletes? It makes the times of the first, third, and fourth athletes faster, and the times of the second and fifth athletes slower. It makes the second athlete tie for second place instead of winning second place. How can you use the number line to find the times to the thousandth of a second that round 48 and 85 seconds? I can label the tick marks and then take the ones that are closest to 48 and 85 hundredths and the one halfway between 48 and 84 hundredths and 85 hundredths, right? So we could use those tick marks and label each one of them. All right, next we're going to compare speeds. All right, so we have some athletes and their speeds. List the top speeds of the athletes in decreasing order, in decreasing order. So I think that means that we want the fastest first, right? And then we want to decrease from there. So again, when I do that, I'm going to look at the place value all the way to the left, and they are all a tens, right? So now I'm going to look at the ones, and here is the highest one. So that is going to be the fastest, right? The most speed. They're going 83 and 700 miles per hour. Then all the rest of them are two, so now I have to go to the tenths, and I'm going to find the highest tenth that I can find. I see an eight here and an eight here, so I'm going to have to compare the hundredths. So 81 is larger than 80. So 82 and 81 hundredths comes next, and then 82 and eight, 80 hundredths, or 8 tenths, comes last. So now I'm going to go back to my 82s. I've done these three speeds, and I have to look at the tenths again, and I notice that this is higher than 1, right? 7 is higher than 1. So we're going to do 82 and 75 hundredths, and then 82 and 13 hundredths. All right, so then now they are in decreasing order. We have the fastest speed here and the slowest speed there. So we could actually label them, right? So here's the fastest, one, and then two, three, 
four, and then that is the slowest. Do any of the athletes have the same top speed rounded to the nearest tenth of a mile per hour? What about the rounded to the nearest mile per hour? Yeah, they do, don't they? Right? Yes. 82 and 81 hundredths, 82 and 80 hundredths, and 82 and 75 hundredths are all rounded to 82.8. So they would all round to the nearest tenth. They would be 82.8. Rounded to the nearest mile per number would be athlete two, athlete three, athlete four, and athlete five. They would all round to the nearest to 83 miles per hour. Right? This one's 83 already. This I would round to 83, round to 83, round to 83. This one would stay 82 miles per hour. Okay, let's see what other questions they have to ask us. All right, there was a sixth absolute. Uh, there was a sixth athlete who was faster than the rider at eighty-two point eight or eight tenths miles per hour. Erase this, okay? But slower than the rider eighty-two and eighty-one hundredths. So he was between eighty-two and eighty and eighty-two and eighty-one hundredths. What could the speed of the three athletes be if all measured to the nearest thousandth of a miles per hour? Hmm. So, the athlete who is 82 and 80 hundredths to the nearest hundredth could be 82 and 796 to the nearest thousandth. The athlete is who is 82 and 81 hundredths to the nearest hundredth could be, let's see, what would round to that? 82 and 812. That would round to this, and this would round to that. That's what they're asking, right? All right. What else? I think they're asking for the three athletes of all measured, right? So the athlete who is uh, between could be 82, so there could be an athlete between these two, 82 and 797, 82 and 798 thousandths, all the way up to 82 and 811 thousandths. So there could be a lot of numbers between these two numbers. All right. Are there different speeds the athlete at 82 and 80 miles per hour could have measured to the nearest thousandths of a second. Yeah, there's a lot of different speeds they could be, right? We could round a lot of them to that. What is the greatest and what is the least? Well, the greatest would be, let's see, to round to this, right? The greatest could be 82, hmm, 804. Um, the least, maybe 82 and 795. I'm, I'm just guessing there, right? Let's see what they ask next. What about for the athlete that 82 and 81 hundredths? What's their fastest and slowest speeds to the thousandth of a second? Well, their fastest was 82 and 814. And... 82 and 805 thousandth of a second. There could be all kinds of answers for those questions. All right, so today we studied the numbers that represented times and top speeds of luge riders and how they are affected when routed to different places. What are some reasons to round numbers? What are some reasons to round numbers? Well, it gives us a general idea of the size of the number. It's easier to understand how big a number is when we round it. And it's, and it's nice to help us estimate as well. What are some reasons to keep the numbers unrounded? If we need to know the exact size of the number, then it can be important not to round it, as in the times, right? If we wanted to know who was first, second, and third, we needed to not round those numbers. If we want to compare two numbers, then we may need more digits to decide which is larger. 
How is rounding decimals the same as rounding whole numbers? I need to think about the place value and then find the closest hundredth or tenth or one just like I would look for the nearest ten, hundred, or thousand for the whole numbers, right? So if I were rounding to the nearest thousand and I had a number like 7,918 and I was rounding to the nearest thousand, I'd always look at 79. Is that going to be closer to 7,000 or 8,000? And it's going to be closer to 8,000 on the number line. So I use that same method when I'm doing decimals, right? Is this going to be closer to 7.9 or 7. Uh, or 8.0, and it's going to be closer to, well, we would round this to 7.91. So 7.91 is closer to 7.9 or 7, or 8.000. <laughs> so it is 7.9. That one's a hard one. I should have said maybe round it to the nearest whole number, right? That would be closer to 8, about 8. It should be wiggly lines. Or we could round to the nearest hundredth. Is that closer to 918? Would it be closer to 910 or 920? And it would be closer to 7 and 920 thousandths. That one might make a little bit more sense to you. Okay, let's get to that cool down. Here we go. A lose rider finished a race in 49 and 256 thousandths of second. Determine the time rounded to the nearest tenth and hundredth. So we're going to have to do two, right? So four, nine, and two, five, six. I'm going to round to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to underline that tenth digit and ask myself, is that closer to 20 or 30? On the number line, remember five is going to push that up to a three. So I'm going to say that this is closer to 49 and three tenths. Now I'm going to do it to the nearest, round it to the nearest hundredth. So I'm going to underline that five and look at the six. Again, is 56 closer to 50 or 60? And it is closer to 60. So it's going to be 49 and 260 thousandths. Or we could leave that zero off and say 26 hundredths. All right. Thanks again for watching, boys and girls. And I'll see you again for lesson 11.